If you haven't subscribed already, ring that bell to get notified when new movies are posted. Hey guys, Chris Young from HomeKit Geek here. Today I'm going to introduce you guys to the Xiaoyan Home Center, which is a um, a smart home ecosystem coming out of China. So they're coming out into the rest of the world, North American market. And uh, some of you might not be familiar with these guys. I know I wasn't. Um, so the, the, the centerpiece of this is going to be the home center, which is the hub. Um, it is Zigbee based, uh, USB micro powered, and it has an ethernet. And one of the really cool products um, that work with this is the awareness switch. So the awareness switch, two AAA batteries, it is also Zigbee based. You need to have the home center for it to connect to. Um, it has a uh, temperature sensor, light sensor, a multi-controller, so button, think like the um, Eve uh, or Fabaro, those kind of things. But what's kind of cool about this is it's all in one form factor, and it's got two motion sensors facing off in different directions, which is something I definitely have not seen before, and uh, I think that opens up some possibilities with this. Um, you know, being able to have coming and going motions, conditionals, all kinds of cool stuff. So anyways, let's get to the unboxing, which we'll go through quickly, and we will uh, set it up. So the first piece we're going to look at here <clears throat> is the home center itself. So this is the Zigbee Hub. You can see very clearly works with Apple HomeKit. Um, there's a bit of English on this, but the majority of the packaging you can see is still written in uh, Chinese. So again, uh, they are going to fix that, I'm sure, as they come to uh, out outside of the Chinese market. You've got... Uh, packaging here. You've got an Ethernet so that it's going to be plugged into your router directly. You've got USB for micro power. The HomeKit code right on that makes it nice and easy um, to access. Of course, we've got the instructions here, um, all written in Chinese, so not that useful for me uh, as I don't speak Chinese, but uh, the nice thing is, is it was easy enough to get through the setup that I didn't even need the instructions. Uh, they also have the USB micro cable here for the power, the Ethernet uh, cable in so you can connect it to your existing switch or router. And of course, the power brick there as well if you need one of these. So everything is in there. So now we're going to move over to the Xiaoyan awareness switch. And so you can see this just one tap, uh, get status automatically, right? I, again, uh, lots of uh, Chinese on the, the box there. So it's really hard to tell exactly what, what all the what all that means, uh, I, I suppose, unless you speak Chinese. So anybody wants to translate for me, please put those in the comments below. That would be great. Um, you can see here that this is, it's a little bit bigger. Um, in fact, it's a lot bit bigger than some of the other um, devices, multi-controllers out there. So I did manage to get this open. You can see uh, inside the device, there is two AAA batteries powering this, which should last a while because it's on Zigbee. Uh, you have the multi-controller button. You have um, over here on the right hand side what appears to be probably the temperature sensors you have on the left hand side the uh, light sensor and then you can see right where kind of my thumb is there that is one of the motion sensors and this is actually on both sides of the device right so which is again something I haven't seen most times you have a single motion sensor over an area so this you could put it on a wall um, have the ability to kind of shoot in both directions, which I think is uh, gives us a lot of flexibility, a lot of um, interesting things you can do with this device. So moving on here, you can see you've got the instructions. Again, I'm still in Chinese. This is the Chinese version, so that makes sense. Um, as well as the double-sided tape, so you can just mount this on a wall. Be aware, if you're mounting it on the wall with double-sided tape, that can cause you to see... Um, some, some paint damage if you try to rip it off. So make sure you know where you want to put it before you just kind of test it out, right? So we're now moving over to the Xiaoyan app, which is a um, HomeKit-based uh, app, and we've got Add Home Center Accessory or Add Endpoint Accessory. So the Home Center Accessory, obviously that's the hub, and then um, if you say Add Endpoint Accessory, what they mean here is that you're going to be adding a an accessory device to the hub itself, right? Do a Zigbee pairing is, is essentially what you're doing. So we started in here, we um, are adding our HomeKit code, right? So we're doing the, the hub itself right now. So this is really going to be as, acting as a HomeKit bridge device. And I will put that, um, I'm going to put this in my garage. That's where I'm going to power it for now. So then I'm going to change the room. I could change the name of this if I wanted to. I can click the next button. It says, okay, additional, additional setup required. Uh, please go see the manufacturer's app. 
because again, the accessories are not Bluetooth, they're not Wi-Fi, so they're not native HomeKit. They need a bridge device to go through, which is what the Xiaoyan app is doing. So the next thing we're gonna do is add the endpoint accessory. So I've taken out that little tab that was uh, preventing the batteries from connecting here. And it says, okay, make sure the accessory is powered on nearby. Long press the button on it, which I am doing. And so there will be like a little flashing light on the awareness switch. And then you'll see it's popping up on the list. There we go. PP01-4. So that's just the name of the accessory, the, the hardware name, I guess. Click on the done button. And now we can see that the device indeed has been added as the awareness switch. So if we tap on the PP01-4 awareness switch, uh, you can see here it's got the model, serial number, firmware version, um, light sensor, motion sensor, all that stuff. You can see the light sensors moving up and down. You've got the two motion sensors. Again, that, that's really unique about this device. There's nothing else available for HomeKit that I'm aware that has that, um, as well as the temperature device or temperature sensor. You know, it would have been nice, if I'm being honest, if they had a humidity sensor in here as well. Um, I would have found that uh, really useful. But uh, given, given that they've packed two motion sensors, a temp sensor, and the multi-controller all on this thing, I'm not going to complain. Let's go check out the gateway device quickly as well. And you can see there, look at that, firmware version. You know, I love that. I love seeing that um, as soon as I get a new device out of the box, that the company is committed to supporting it, that they're already releasing new firmware, right? So that's that's a pretty cool thing. I've actually been running this a couple weeks and um, I've seen at, at least, I think, two updates in this period of time. Uh, the app has been updated, right? So they're they're making the effort here, right? I think um, as companies like Xiaoyan, like Akara, as they start coming out of um, their market where they're extremely strong, like China, for instance, um, they realize that different markets have different requirements. And they, I, I love the fact that they're taking that into account um, and really trying to improve upon their, their experience for their customers. So that finishes updating here. We'll uh, take a look around. Um, you've got the ability to create scenes within the app here, um, multiple houses. So they are, are taking into account that you can have multiple HomeKit houses. Um, it is, it's not the prettiest app. Um, let's be honest, right? It's, it's fairly simple, but I kind of like that. Um, there are other apps out there like the Eve Elgato app, for instance, that are um, Eve systems, sorry, that is a they they really got a really nice interface on them, right? There's some people who specialize in that. I'm not going to spend much time in the Xiaoyan app over time. I'm going to be in here to add new devices, and then I'm going to use one of my other HomeKit apps. It's it's really that simple. So I'm actually okay with the fact that they're focusing on firmware and functionality rather than the aesthetic of the app itself. So last but not least, let's go over to uh, the garage, which is where I put this thing, and let's take a look at the Xiaoyan bridge as well as the um, the awareness switch from a home kit standpoint so you can see here that they've actually exposed basically everything right you've exposed the the multi-controller you've exposed the two motion sensors the light sensor as well as the temperature sensor and all of this is in the consistent home kit method right um, we can go in and look at that button you've got an unconfigured button you've got single press you've got double press um, would have been nice if they had the long press but again this is uh, kind of consistent with what we see in other buttons is the ability to uh, double press these buttons. If you aren't familiar with how to use conditionals, I'll put a link to that video. You can double, easily double um, the capabilities of these buttons just by using HomeKit conditionals, right? Of course, we've got the motion detector in here uh, going one way. We've got the light sensor, so you can create some, some cool conditional um, automations, like if this motion detector detects motion from this direction and the light is below a certain amount, then turn the lights on. All right, so you can start to get pretty granular uh, around what exactly you're gonna be doing. So really that's about it. Um, I've got a couple more Xiaoyan products that I'm gonna be featuring in upcoming videos in the next few weeks. So I will definitely get that into you guys. There is a, uh, a door and window switch, which is tiny, tiny and works super fast. Uh, there's also a uh, light socket product similar to what's available from the uh, Kugeek and uh, the Opro 9. So we'll take a look at those as well. Uh, what do you guys think? Is this is the Xiaoyan Home Center, is this something you would consider in your house? Um, it's a little bit rough around the edges right now, but they are definitely doing more work. And what I'm personally excited about is that this is going to really open up more products 
for HomeKit, which is it's good for the whole ecosystem, right? If you're an Apple user, if you're you're into the HomeKit ecosystem, um, having more of these products is going to drive price ranges down. It gives us more options and choice is always good, right? Um, anything I missed, anything you guys would like to know that uh, I haven't covered, please definitely let me know in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't. Ring that bell to become notified. I'm posting at least a couple videos a week at this point. So uh, if you want to know when that's happening, definitely ring that bell. Share with your friends. Tell them to subscribe as well. And if you want to learn how to make your house just a little bit smarter using Apple HomeKit, do me a favor. Check out in the video details below where there is a coupon code for my Udemy course. Thanks.